All right, on the new stream. I'm looking at this panel and I'm not happy with it. You know what's not good is it's so long. And also, I think I might have made those letters too small. Are they sevens or are they eights? Let's look at the previous page. They're twelves. Okay. <laughs> so I want to check. I, I uh, Now I remember. The sevens and eights are on the Moon Knight page. I'm looking at the point size for the text. And you want it to be consistent. So this is why I do the lettering on this stage is because you got to know that where everything is and also you're going to you're going to see in my opinion kind of an interesting thing happen. All right, this is the lettering. This is this character speaking and we know he's leaving on the right because we've already established that's how the the room is laid out. Uh, and he has the first line too. So we're going to put him that there. And Looking at this particular panel, there's nothing that important going on over here. So we can go into the um, roughs layer. It's not pencils yet, it's just roughs. I am going to grab all of this stuff. And we're just going to sh shove this down here. And among other things, you know. You might be thinking, well, now you got nothing on the right side. But you know what? On the right side, we can actually do some more details. We can create visual information for the comic as well. Whoops. You can see I've... <laughs> it may be very subtle. You may not be able to see it, actually. But I've, what I've tried to do is create... By the way, let's find the vanishing point. Um... This is that line. I think this line will be there. No, I think it should be, um, that puts our vanishing point somewhere right here. Okay. That looks about right. Um, this, the room, you know, the, the area beyond the corridor can be dark, but it, you know, not completely dark, I think probably. And if we say, okay, this is the thing, even though his, his elbow is in the way. I think we can get away with that. We're not showing the ceiling in this case. Another uh, thing I've done is I haven't gone completely straight with the bars here, so I got to fix that as well. I'm trying to aim this line towards what I think is the vanishing point. And because this would was this speech bubble now would almost certainly cover up Corbeau's head. Then we gotta do a bit of resizing. Maybe put him over here. Oops. Gonna get your tails right. A pioneer. Now what do we do with this bit of corridor here? We can come up with something for that as well. And I'm doing the same trick. Same old perspective trick. Here. Except this one's going to be straight up. screwed this up slightly. If 
we make this horizontal, <laughs> I've already screwed this up. All right, if we make this horizontal, it's like there and there, and then there, right? So now we've got kind of the beginnings of a feel for, for what's happening. I haven't quite got his, his neck area for the helmet. Also, I think I've probably got it shaped wrong. Wait. Corbo's probably got some kind of dialogue, but, um,. I'm not 100% on it. Let's say um, this is placeholder text. I'm not 100% sure what he should say. Uh, I'd sooner die, something like that. I'll die first. I'll die before I help you, ape. All right, 12. You damn dirty ape. That is a good stack right there. We're gonna make the U bold. I'll die before I'll die. Die should also be bold. Ooh, should be bold. Think about it, Corbo. Corbo will be bold. This uh, these little touches, like figuring out which words to bold in your dialogue balloons. Um, and you can't build everything. Which words you're going to emphasize? And it'll add like a lot to your um, your dialogue cadence. All right. All right. This is his thumb. I may have to redraw everything by the time I get th done with this. All right, Cersei is leaving. And then on the next panel, Corbo thinks to himself, I have to, I must, I must escape this cell. Back to being regular and back to being 12 point type. So we got um, some dialogue. And so I don't know if this is good advice or bad advice, but I'll just go ahead and tell you what I do. I make up the dialogue kind of on the spot. Like I know where the story's going on the page, and I just sort of make up the dialogue. And then it's like placeholder dialogue, unless I think of something better. Um, but you must come up with something. You must figure out what you're doing here. And I know that I he's noticing the... Perhaps I can pick this lock. Right? This lock. Hmm, how about this? Hmm, this lock seems... Simple design. All right? And you just sort of debut like each version of what text are you going to try out? Hmm, this lock seems to be a very simple design. 
There we go. Now, once again, if we ran out of room, we've got so much dialogue that the image is not going to fit. Well, then we're going to either move or resize the image. You can do either one. In this case, whoops. Let's grab it over here. I think we can just move him down into the left a little bit. Like this. Maybe he doesn't know that Aura's out there, actually. He kind of woke up and she was gone. It's something like that. He's noticing the lock in this panel. And in this panel right here, you can see I've done a little bit more of where I wanted the shadows to go. This is the what I call an Eisner type panel with a lot of lighting effects on it. I have a couple of pieces of wire. Air Force. I don't know if... what is the French Air Force called in World War One? I? I should probably look that up. Let me look it up real quick. What was the French Air Force called in World War One? The Army de la Air. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so you want to get... Let's, let's use this. Whoops. Okay, and they were... I can find a Wikipedia. The French naval aviation is called Aeronautique Navale, covered elsewhere. Okay. <laughs> yeah, part of his history, he was a World War I um, air pilot. Select the whole thing. Uh, size is 12. We could go down to 11 if we have to. I've got to con see, I conveniently placed the, the panel over to the left a bit, but, but not enough. So I think we need to shrinky dink down a little bit more. And remember, because these are roughs, whoops, because these are roughs, we won't lose any fidelity. We, we, if, once you put ink on, you can't really change things without losing fidelity. But we haven't really done the art yet. We're, we're still in the notional stage of roughs, where it's like, you know, it's, I could draw something like this, maybe. Oops. I mean, it's back here. And I think we black in this area right here. Like, this will be blacked. Um, this lock, I, I know I modeled this after um, my vague memory of how Skyrim was. I think my fingers look okay, where he's picking a lock. But the lock doesn't look good. It's not circular over here. Or maybe I kind of retroactively tried to make it circular, but... Once again, this is one of those things where... Let's make it... This is where reference could really make a difference. 
Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to do that for right now. <laughs> We're going to put um, the lock right here. This is on the cell door. Right there, and then my my best panel is this one where he's he's looking at it. And okay, I learned a couple of things in the Army de la Air. Pardon my French pronunciation, which is non-existent. But we're going to be really explicit about it. Oops, what happened to my Atari? Right, try again. Okay, this is my rudimentary understanding of how um, lock picking works. <laughs> if I can tension the lock column this way and just probe for tumblers. And at the end he says, there I've got it. And that way, we've got the full comic page kind of statted out pretty good. Whoops. Let's go ahead and break in a little bit more detail, and then we're going to... We're going to at least do the, um, the panel borders. And I'm just trying to figure out what what other details could I put on this lock. It's very boring the way I drew it. You know, when you're zoomed into something, it's a good idea to add more details. The other thing we could do is we're zoomed in on the hands like this, and we know that he wears gloves, so we can actually kind of put the seam of the gloves. You know how it goes along the side of your fingers? have to screw around with that later. Um, we won't make such an obvious keyhole. Let's take a look at our dialogue. I must escape the cell. Must. Would be bold. There we go. That's the right. You want part part of the trick is you get got to get your dialogue stacked right. Hmm. Hmm. We'll be bold. This lock seems to be a very simple design. But very, very is our bold. We could probably do design. I have a couple of pieces. I 
only have a couple of pieces of wire. I only found a couple of pieces of wire. In the cell. There we go. And then we can even do a sound effect. Click. Maybe this isn't a click yet. The click is the success. Tick. I don't know. Maybe we won't do the sound effect there. Scrape. There's got to be some kind of collar. I haven't done his uh, uniform and profile very much. All right, I think we have a beginning here. So just so we can say that we're officially started, let's get, uh, I've got my technical pen out. This is technical pen this time. And ink, inky. Oh wait, uh, layer one is where we really need to be. We're just trying to Grab the panel borders. One of my notes in recent Hubert class that the teacher gave me was he wanted a wider panel border on something and I, I should probably ask like what's the reasoning there because I you know I, I definitely want to do it if it's a smarter idea and it did look better but like how do you know like what's what the uh when it is I found a pretty good thread on um on x about manga panel borders and layouts and they actually have like a whole standardized system of borders, gutters, and layouts and stuff. This is the most um, confusing part of comics, I think, is knowing how to panel things. Like, what do you, what goes where? How many panels should I make this? You know, what's what's the layout? What's the layout going on inside the panel? But what are the what's the layout of the panels on the page? I kind of settled on a couple of ones that have worked for me, which is a three layer. Generally three layers is what I do. Um, usually five panels, one, two, three, four, five. That's about it. Yeah. You could go to six. I don't do a nine panel or an eight panel page generally. And I, I think in terms of wide shots and standard panels, you know, wide, square, wide, square. And then you can mess, mess a little bit sometimes. Insets, you know. 
But that's uh, that's a very rudimentary way of looking at it in a lot of ways. No, my ink file, it's this one. So now we're gonna drop the opacity down out of pencils. And actually we're gonna drop pencils off entirely to make sure that our panel borders look about right. I think they all look about right. You can see where the words are. The words that are close to the edges of panel borders, those are okay. They're gonna use the panel borders as part of their balloon. So I think we have a good start. All right, so now that we've got that, let's get started for real. Let me go back into Rusty Old Nib. Shout out to, um, actually, whoops, cancel. Shout out to, I hope you get his name right. You're my channel. It's on my Qbert School homework. Let me start right there. Pisces Rising Press. Um, he recognized the um, Rusty Nip pen, pen, so shout out to that dude. Cool. I'm glad you recognized them. Yeah, I think they look great. I love them. I uh, highly recommend those to anybody. All right, let's go ahead and do it. We're going to start with the foreground, as always, which means the bars. Corbo has been in bar, un, behind bars for about three pages now. I got a problem immediately in that. There we go. I want the bars to be. Pretty much. Same width. So I didn't I indeed do have him with his hands both hands on different bars so these bars are going to change as I draw the hands gripping them we can handle that later there is kind of a tangent problem that I created with this and I'm not sure how to fix it just yet maybe I can fix it by um, with a shadow or something up at the top Um, but anytime you have anything splitting the panel from top to bottom in a vertical or horizontal way, it looks like it's making multiple panels, which it's, you don't necessarily want to do that. So I've got to figure out a way that we can obviously not be doing that. One way to do it is put some kind of thing in the foreground here. Let's go back to the pencil layer. Yeah, we could put maybe an overhang or part of the cell. Maybe there's some some equipment nearby. And that would alleviate some of that problem, I think. All right, let's go back to ink here. If that is if that is what's going to happen, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do it. We're going to commit to the bit, as they say. Okay. We can go a little bit thicker with our line weight since this is even closer to the foreground. Often, when you think of foreground, you think of stuff down at the bottom, but foreground could be anywhere. It could be at the top.
or hang up. Well, let's do this one too. I didn't do this one. It can be at the bottom. Here it is. Some cabling. A little bit. Okay, now we're gonna do, let's do a little bit of him. We're going to do um, light source this way, so it'll be dark in the back. And so the way to do that is um, wherever you have your dark darkness and your light. So let's say the light is this lighted corridor. Maybe there's some light over there. The light is going this way. When you're doing your, your hatching, your whips are going to kind of reach around or your feathers are going to reach around the three-dimensional shape. And the point will be pointing towards the light, you know, kind of going in that direction. And I will admit that I'm not the best at it. Anyways, I'm not going to do more of it. It's better to have the whole drawing in before you start the hatching because you can put it on a different level and or a different layer just in case you mess it up, which is very likely in my case. All right, here we go. Let's try this. How do we grab? Let's say he's going to grab with his thumb behind it this time and put this thumb up. So it shows him leaning forward. Let's take a look at it without the pencil layers. And you can see that it's got like the using the rusty nib, like it's it's got this sort of grunge effect to it that feels to me pretty natural. It's also got plenty of um swing to it. Like look it can go from like Thin to thick to thin. <laughs> right, see, that's what's great about it. Whoops. I think I made his shoulder too hunched, so we're going to drop that line right back there. 
Next thing we're going to do is because we know it's a light coming this way, anything like his collar or lapel. We can double up on any of the lines that are on the far side or the opposite side. Same deal with this cable. It's not just for the characters, it's for all the objects too. So, um. Same thing here. And, you know, by the time we get this done, we should have a fairly dramatic shot. I don't know if it's to be the most dramatic shot. Please like, follow, and subscribe. There'll be more comics every day. You can see that we've got a good start. We've got a character drawn in. Huh. Before you know it. Talk to you later.